types are in this video. I talk about a normally distributed random variable and I show that the expectation of a normally distributed random variable x is equal to its mean mu. So again, we're talking about the normally distributed random variable x with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. So as we know, the expectation of a continuous random variable can be expressed this way. It's the x times its probability, which is here represented at f of x. This is the probability density function of x. And we have to sum over x for all the possible values of x from negative infinity to infinity. And that's our expectation. So for a normally distributed random variable x with mean u and standard deviation sigma, we have our probability density function f of x is this expression. So now we need to sub in this expression for f of x into the integral. We want to compute the expectation of x where x is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, and as I said, this term here is the probability density function of the normal random variable x. Well, how do we compute this um, complicated integral? Well, let's first simplify the problem and assume that the mean is 0 and sigma is 1, so that we can simplify this expression here. Well, and as we know, when mu is 0 and sigma is 1 and x is normally distributed, well, then x is a standard normal random variable. So there we have the expectation of a standard normal random variable. This expression here now looks cleaner than in the previous integral. So we have to compute this integral. Okay, so we're computing this integral here. While we're summing over x, and this term here does not depend on x, so it's a constant, and we can take it outside the integral as a multiplier. So now we have to compute this integral. Well, it's from negative infinity to infinity, so we can just easily sub in infinity as a number instead of x, but what we can do is take the limit from negative n to n as n goes to infinity. So how do we compute an integral? Well, we need to find the antiderivative of the term inside the integral. So we need to find the antiderivative of this expression here. Well, the antiderivative is this, and you can check that. You can just take the derivative of this expression with respect to x, and you'll get back this. So we're getting rid of the integral by placing the antiderivative. So here we have to compute this expression from the lower bound of negative n to the upper bound n. And again, we're taking the limit of this expression as n goes to infinity. So how do we compute this expression? Well, for the upper bound, we evaluate the expression at the upper bound, so just sub in n for x, and we get this. And then we have to subtract the expression evaluated at the lower bound, which is negative n. That's why we have a minus sign here. And this is the expression evaluated at negative n. We have n squared here because we just have minus n squared. So that's the same as n squared. Well, it's clear to see that this minus n minus here become a plus. So we have minus e to the power of negative n squared over 2 plus e to the power of n squared over 2. Well, that is just 0. So we have a limit of 0 as n goes to infinity. But n is not anywhere here. It's just the limit of a constant, which is just the constant itself. So this whole thing is equal to 0. So we just showed that the expectation of a standard normal random variable is zero, which is what we expected since the 
mean of a standard normal random variable is zero. But now we want to show it for the general case, right? So this is the expectation of a normal random variable. And here again, we have mu and sigma because they don't have to be zero and one. So we need to compute the integral. Well, we can do this um, by applying a transformation. So as you see here, this term looks sort of complicated. Well, let's get rid of this by transformation. Should just let y equal x minus mu over sigma. Well, and then we need to compute dy. So dy over dx is just taking the derivative of this with respect to x is just 1 over sigma. Well, then dy is just dx over sigma. So then we have to compute x and dx because in our integral we have x and dx. We're summing over x and we need to replace that. But first we know what that will be in terms of y. So just multiply here by sigma both sides and put mu to the other side. So we have x equals sigma times y plus mu. And here multiply both sides by sigma. We just have dx is equal to sigma times dy. So this is our transformed integral. This is what we had. And we're transforming by subbing in for x the new expression. So x is now this term. And this term now became just y squared. And dx became sigma dy. Well, this integral can be broken into two parts since we have a summation here. So we just break it apart. And this is a constant, so it can go outside of the integral. And sigma is a constant, so it's also a multiplier, it can go outside the integral. And you can see here that sigma they cancel out and here sigma cancel out. So here we don't have them anymore. Okay, so what is this expression? Well, this is, this is just the probability density function of a standard normal random variable, right? When u is zero and sigma is one, this is the probability density function for the standard normal random variable. And we're summing this probability density from negative infinity to infinity. So we're summing all the probabilities. Well, we know that has to be equal one, right? The sum of all probabilities has to equal one. So that's why this simplifies to mu times one. Well, what about this term here? Well, that is just y times the probability density function of a standard normal random variable. So this whole term is just the expectation of a standard normal random variable. Well, we just show that that equals its mean mu, which is zero. So this whole term is zero. So here we're just left with sigma times zero. And that's why we have mu. So here we go. This whole expression simplifies to mu. So the expectation of a normal random variable is equal to its mean mu, which is what we wanted to show.